Hello, and welcome to Fridays with Foster. I'm your host, Foster. And today, we have got a wonderful cinnamon vanilla latte. And you can see how much cinnamon's on the top there. It's actually pretty impressive. So uh, we're going to give this a shot. I actually, I don't think I've ever had this. I mean, I've had cinnamon and coffee, and I've had a vanilla latte, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, we'll check this out. Oh man, it's like having dessert, is, which is a good thing. Uh, so today, what are we talking about? We are talking about humility and leadership. People don't leave jobs, you've heard this before, they leave bosses, they leave bosses, they don't leave leaders. So when we look at the kind of leader that we want to be, we need to look at the sensibility of humility. So, with humility, what are some things that we can do? What are some humble actions? Well, number one, you can admit when you're wrong. Amazing, just think. <laughs> when I do something that results in a different outcome that I have intended, or wrong, do I own up to it? Do I admit to it? Do I spend more energy actually covering it up or sidestepping, talking to people about it or telling the truth about it than just simply owning up to it and dealing with it? Humble leaders understand that they are fallible. One of my, probably the things I'm most proud of as a parent is the ability and a willingness to make amends to my kids, apologize to my kids when, you know, when I act like the child sometimes, right? <laughs> it's the same thing with your team, people that work in your business. It's okay to make mistakes. The idea is to admit when you see it happen. Number two, ask for help. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. In today's day or maybe since I was young the idea is you know pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and, and getting things done and and asking for help is a sign of weakness and you know the one of the biggest problems with that is that if we're asking for help or, or if we're not asking for help we don't give other people an opportunity to actually grow and become more empowered in their position and as individuals. Forget about me looking like I know everything that I'm doing and that, uh, that, that I can do it on my own, whether I can or not. I'm actually taking away opportunities from my team to operate more autonomously, more effectively, and to grow by not asking for help. Uh, number three, take little or no credit for the wins and the achievements. Give your people the opportunity because if you're really a good leader, it's going to be them <laughs> that actually get these things done. So these positive things, if, if, if I'm not relinquishing, if I'm not delegating to people and empowering them, first of all, I'm, we're not gonna be able to achieve the things in our company that we could. So a, even a win is not going to be as high as it could be as they say good is the enemy of great. You might have some good wins, but to have great wins, it really takes the team to do that. So when those things come about, make sure that your team gets the credit and not you as the individual. If you're really a good leader from what I've seen, your team's going to thank you anyway. But when you try and self-promote and take credit, really doesn't work out too well and it looks bad too on you so uh, next thing accept responsibility for the losses in Jocko Willink's book extreme ownership there's a wonderful and I'm sorry to see my marketing person actually told me I'm supposed to uh, hold up uh, hold up the books for people to see what I mentioned sorry here it is so extreme ownership how Navy SEALs lead and win, Jocko Willing. Uh, one of the things he talks about is your responsibility as a leader. And if you're in the middle, if you have a board of directors you answer to, if you answer to stockholders, 
or uh, if you're even a, a, a middle manager or a C-suite and you answer to the CEO, no matter what, you are responsible for the communication that, that you have. You're, you're not a victim, right? We are not victims here. Um, the idea is that we need to look at the situation rationally. If we have somebody above us, some, maybe one of the members of our board who is uh, continually asking us for things and digging and seemingly micromanaging, instead of asking what's wrong with them, we ask, hmm, what am I not giving them, right? Assuming responsibility for a lack of information transfer, something along those lines. I've got to be not giving them something, or maybe I'm not entirely clear in understanding what it is they want. That's on me. So that's me accepting the loss, right, and taking responsibility for it. The next thing you need to do as a um, leader is you need to be authentic and be honest. And again, honesty without compassion is verbal abuse. So don't think that you're doing anybody any favors by being simply honest. We want to make sure that we're, we are practicing some empathy in the situations that we're communicating with people on based on their experience. And be authentic. People really like that. People are drawn to people that are authentic, that are their true selves. And you can feel it. I don't want to be, I, it's difficult for me to trust people that seem inauthentic, right? People that are not real. And then uh, last, you know, share your experience, share your learnings. If you don't tell people about your past or your history, your experience in different situations, and you just want to tell them, you know, with that kind of leadership dogma, dogma via leadership, don't do this. Why? Because I said so. Or do this. Why? Because I said so, which is ridiculous. Um, the, they don't understand. They may hear the words you're saying, but they don't make a connection of why it's important. When you tell the story of, hey, when I was first in sales, when I was uh, uh, in charge of manufacturing initially, or when I did this in my family business, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I, you know, this is an, an area that I failed, that I had challenge, and here's what I learned from it. Now, now that I've told you that, you, know, you can do what you want in order for you to learn the lesson, but you don't have to repeat that behavior. That's why I'm sharing it with you. So. With that, I want to let you know my beautiful, wonderful, amazing wife, Nikki, gave me my closing phrase because I always feel like I'm not really closing strong, if you will, uh, on the Fridays with Foster. So thank you. Hold on. Thank you for watching Fridays with Foster because life is too short to not enjoy your coffee. Have a great day.